Hi there and welcome to this feed info video on supporting dairy cows through improved methionine supplementation. My name is Monet Bryant and I am the Perspectives Content Editor here at Feed Info. This video, which we have put together with support from Ivanic, will dig into the important role that methionine plays in supporting dairy cow productivity, health and reproduction, especially during the crucial transition phase. So to help us explore this a bit more, I have with me today Global Technical Support Manager Lucas Bauer and Ruminant R&D Manager Jesse Gier, both from Ivonic. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, I wonder if we could kick things off with both of you telling us a bit more about yourselves and your roles at Ivonic. Jesse, let's start with you. Please tell us a bit more about yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Jesse Guader and I'm the Ruminan Research Manager at Evonik for almost two years. I'm based in Germany, near, near Frankfurt. I almost have nine years of experience in rumen nutrition, which encompass a PhD and a postdoc in on rumen fermentation, and also three years of experience in the research group of an international feed company. My current role consists in first developing the scientific knowledge on our products in terms of functions and metabolic roles at different stages of lactation, and I'm also in charge of testing our products globally in different farm management conditions with a specific focus on performance, health, and sustainability of the production systems. Fantastic. So just the person to help us explore this topic uh, in a bit more depth today. Now, Lucas, can I come to you? Can you please tell us a bit more about yourself? Hi, my name is Lukas Bauer. I'm the technical support manager for our sustainable ruminant solution products. I work together with our team of regional experts across the globe and we provide detailed information and guidance to customers who are interested and really focused on profitable and sustainable dairy farming. I work, I've been working for Evonik for five years now and um, since my studies of agricultural science, I'm involved in the animal nutrition industry. So equally well placed for our discussion today um, and the perfect person to give us a bit more background on this topic. So Lucas, um, can you tell us why methionine supplementation is so crucial uh, for dairy producers to consider? So methionine in a dairy cow's diet is a very important part because it's usually the amino acid that limits milk production and milk protein synthesis the most. The reason for that is that methionine concentration in microbial protein is very much lower than in the milk protein. So you see that there is the gap. Um, additionally, methionine is a functional amino acid and that means it plays an important part also in the metabolism. So it has several functions going into the health and also the development of the animal. So clearly um, an essential nutrient for uh, dairy producers to be thinking about. Uh, but I wonder, Lucas, are dairy producers always getting methionine supplementation right? Um, what is the main challenge here for them? When using supplemental amino acids in the dairy cow's diet, for example, rumen protected methionine, it is important that that amino acid is protected against microbial degradation. This is the first thing. Then the second thing is that also this amino acid has to be released out of the product in the small intestine. So it can be absorbed and then used in the metabolism of the dairy cow. The third thing is that the product has a physical stability when using the product, for example, in the feed mill, feed mixing, but also in the TMR mixing on the farm. And then in the end, of course, having chosen the right product, it is important that the nutritionist has a program at his hand where he can evaluate the amino acid supply from the ration, but also the amino acid requirement of the specific herd. And bringing all this together um, is the right way to supplement amino acids in a dairy cow's diet. 
Now, uh, Jesse, Lucas uh, just talked about methionine's importance uh, in milk production, but I just want to zoom out a bit and, and talk about a dairy cow's reproductive uh, performance, uh, which obviously plays a big part in the milk production process. Um, and the fact that the transition period is of particular importance here. So uh, can you tell us why that is? The transition period of a cow is defined as the three weeks before calving and the three weeks post calving. It's a period of a lot of change. First, the cow needs to adapt to a different diet. She was usually fed a very fibrous diet during the dry off period, and now she has to, to be adapted to a more a diet richer in starch. It's also a period where the requirements of the animals are increasing a lot because to support the increasing milk production, the milk yield and the milk protein. But it's a period where the animal has still a low intake because the rumen is not fully functional. So this imbalance between the high requirement and the low intake creates a status that we call the negative energy balance. To compensate that, the cow has to mobilize her body fat. The fat will, uh, will be exported from the tissue to the liver as non-esterified fatty acids. This has two consequences. The first one is that the NIFA support the low intake of a cow, so which will further support uh, the negative energy balance. On the other hand, this massive arrival of fat in the liver will provoke what we call the fatty liver, and then will further alter the liver functions. And we know that the liver is really important for a lot of different functions, such as the protein synthesis or the immunity. The liver, to, for, to, to give more energy to the cow, will transform the fat into ketone bodies. The most important one is the beta hydroxybutyrate. And this increase in the plasma concentration of ketone bodies will further lead to a metabolic disease called the ketosis. Even though the uh, um, ketone bodies can partially fulfill the energetic requirement of an animal, they have deleterious effect on the animals because they can lead to more inflammation issues. Thank you for that, Jesse. Now that we know a bit more about the transition period, let's circle back to methionine um, and talk about how rumen protected methionine can be of use during this critical time in the dairy cow's life and exactly how supplementation can lead to improvements. So, Lucas, can I come to you and ask you to kick us off here, please? Okay, let's start with the amino acid balancing concept in general. Uh, for most of you, it's known that if we balance the diets for amino acids, we can reduce the expensive protein in the dairy diet. And this means production costs can be decreased and profitability can be increased. So this means that the nitrogen efficiency with supplemental methionine can be increased. And there is a nice illustration for that. Uh, the Liebig barrel, what you all know. So it shows that on one side um, we can either increase all the protein sources, but this will be quite inefficient um, to increase the MIG protein production or the MIG production in general, or we just supplement the limiting amino acids in a very specific um, amount to balance the diet. And this has a nice impact on the nitrogen efficiency, as I just mentioned already. And we have also a nice trial example for that concept. And this is the Proderick trial published in the Journal of Dairy Science. In this trial, the crude protein level was reduced from 18.6% to 14.8%. And together with that, rumen protected methionine in form of mepron was added in different steps. So the lowest crude protein level had the highest amount of protein in highest amount of mepron in the ration. And in this trial, or in the trial results, we can see that the MIG nitrogen efficiency went up from the highest crude protein level to the lowest crude protein level. I mean, this is not really um, specific for this trial, but 
what we have seen here in this trial is that in the intermediate treatments, the MIG protein and also the MIG production were the highest compared to the other two treatments. And additionally, the nitrogen excretion was also measured and this showed that there is a big advantage if you use Mepron and the crude protein amino acid balancing concept in your diet. And now Jesse, uh, what can you add for us here? So now let's focus on the transition period and the effect of women protected methionine on transition cows. So to, to, to assess this effect, Levonik conducted a trial at the University of Illinois in which two groups of cows, two groups of 30 cows, were fed either a control diet or a diet supplemented with mepron. So the supplementation period covered the transition period and continued until 60 days in milk. So overall, we had 60, 60 multiparous cows which were fed once per day and milk three times per day. What was the most important result? We observed greater performance with additional uh, women protected methionine. So this is illustrated here, where you can see the graph related to energy correcting milk, so the ECM or the milk yield. And the MEPRON curve is the white triangle, where, and you can see that the milk production was higher right at the beginning of, the, of lactation and was continuously more higher until the 60 days in milk. How did we achieve these results? The cow had less ketosis, and this was observed by the lower concentration in the plasma of non-esterified fatty acids and beta hydroxybutyrate as observed in these two graphs. So overall, that means that the liver functions were improved. And this was also observed when we looked at bio plasma biomarkers related to inflammation or oxidative stress. Mepron of methionine supplementation reduces inflammation and also reduces oxidative stress. So overall, methionine works in the metabolism by improving liver health and immune functions and helps protecting the animals against oxidative stress. So overall, the cow is in better condition and by that performs better. In the companion papers, we also observed that women protected methionine and mepron improved the health and the functions in the mammary gland. So now we look to the mepron product itself. So mepron works by providing methionine in a highly bioavailable form for the cow. And this can be achieved um, by the unique acyl cellulose protective layer what mepron has. The film coating with acyl cellulose works with a dependent, time-dependent release technique. So that means with more time the product stays in the animal, the higher the methionine release from the product is. And this is really mimicking, mimicking the methionine release from other protein sources. Therefore, the methionine can be um, very efficiently absorbed and used in the metabolism. Thank you both uh, for that. Now, Jesse, we've just heard how methionine supplementation can benefit the dairy cow in a number of ways. Um, but what about her offspring? Are the effects of increased methionine supply limited to the mother only? Um, what are you seeing um, in calves? The effect of increased methionine supply is not only limited to the mother. If we go back to the Illinois study, we can have a look at the performance of the cows that were born from the cows that were fed either control or mepron. We observe the performance from calving till, the, till weaning. And we observe that the, cow, the cows that were born from cows fed mepron had higher growth performance. So overall in this table, you can observe the higher body weight of, on average during this pre-weaning period for cows coming from mepron cows and also a, 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 an improved frame of the animals. This is of uh, utmost importance because uh, recent studies observed a positive relationship 
between the average daily gain during pre-winning of the heifer and her performance during the first lactation. How did we achieve these results? So these calves, when they were born, samples were taken of the placenta and also there were liver biopsies taken during the pre-weaning period. And on these two set of samples, we observed, we measured several indicators related to the overall metabolism. And what we observed is that there were an enhanced acti uh, activity of several parameters that triggered higher protein synthesis and also a higher energy metabolism and lower oxidative stress. And this was observed on both the, the placenta, so the at birth, and also during the pre weaning stage. So overall, methionine triggered a kind of epigenetic effect, which is a very interesting new area of research. And overall, this epigenetic effect supported the higher growth performance of the cows before weaning. Thank you, Jesse, for that great overview. And, and thank you to you too, Lucas. Um, thank you to you both for sharing your expertise with us today on the importance of methionine in the overall health, um, well-being and productivity of the dairy cow. And especially during the transition phase that is so important to the milk production process. Um, and thank you to everyone for tuning in. We hope you can join us again for future videos from Feed Info. Um, and remember to keep up to date with the latest developments on this um, and more topics affecting the dairy industry to join us on feedinfo.com.